You may have seen in the news lately or heard discussion about the subject of drone delivery becoming more possible in the United States very soon. And the reason for that is the FAA, along with the Transportation Security Administration, recently released a notice of proposed rulemaking to streamline the process for companies to receive approval for flying drones beyond visual line of sight. So I'd like to take a few moments today to help you understand what this actually means, not just in the world of drones, but for just about everyone in the United States. If you are not a fan of drones and you have just stopped by to learn about drone deliveries, I'd love to hear your thoughts after watching this video. Hi everyone, welcome to 51 Drones, where I've been helping people learn all about drones and related tech since 2017. Now we've seen some pretty big changes in the world of drones in the past few years, but one development that could fundamentally change the lives of most Americans is the effort to make drone deliveries a reality. From 2020 up until this moment, there has been just a scattering of companies trying to implement drone deliveries. Some I'm sure you are very familiar with, like Walmart, Amazon, UPS, but the scope of these deliveries has been very limited due to current regulations and restrictions, including but not limited to not being able to fly a drone further than the human eye can see it. Well, with this new proposal, which is called Part 108, our current administration wants to make that process much easier, thereby accelerating the number of companies that are able to get into the game, so to speak. So first, what is Part 108? Well, in very simple terms, this is the new FAA regulation that allows drones to fly beyond visual line of sight. Up until now, drone companies have been stuck in this pilot program limbo, begging for waivers to fly deliveries. And when they do get waivers, it takes a very long time to get them. That has made growth painfully slow, but part 108 creates an actual framework to scale. Think of it as kind of the difference between the horse and buggy era and the first highway system. Suddenly drone delivery isn't just a gimmick where we make fun of having your tube socks delivered by drone. It's now a serious discussion that's gonna affect many aspects of our lives beyond just personal consumables and fast food. We're talking about prescription medications being delivered in minutes instead of waiting a day or more, life-saving equipment like AEDs in emergency situations, and other medical supplies that may be needed quickly. Also things like farm equipment parts, construction tools, resupplying offshore rigs or ships in the fraction of the time that it takes to do it by boat. And then an even bigger impact could come in times of emergencies like flood or storm relief, the list is endless. And yes, hot and fresh pizzas and coffees are also on the list, but this is so much bigger than those basic items. Now, not everything is gonna show up by drone. We're not gonna see couches or flat screen TVs flying through the sky. The first wave will be lightweight, high value and time sensitive items. As I mentioned, prescription meds, takeout and coffee, groceries in small quantities, emergency supplies like EpiPens or blood samples or even defibrillators. Basically the things where speed really matters. So where will this actually happen first? Not in big cities. Forget about Manhattan or LA or Boston for now. The airspace is much too crowded. Instead, drone deliveries are already rolling out in smaller suburbs, rural areas and test cities where air traffic is much easier to control. Amazon's doing it in College Station, Texas, for instance. Wing is flying in Virginia. Zipline is testing in Arkansas. These quiet launch areas are where the infrastructure can be built without too much pushback. But here's the question. When it comes to your town, how are people gonna react? The obvious question is, how do we keep hundreds of drones from smashing into each other or even into manned aircraft? That's where unmanned traffic management comes in. Think of it like air traffic control, but automated for drones. They'll use GPS corridors, altitude rules, geofencing, and even AI collision avoidance. It sounds pretty great on paper, right? But I'm sure you've heard stories of car GPS systems guiding people into driving right into the lake. You know, tech doesn't always work perfectly. 
What happens when the system glitches? Who's responsible when a drone crashes into your backyard or collides with a small aircraft? Would you feel safe with drones buzzing overhead? Or do you think it's a disaster just waiting to happen? These are the questions that I'm certain many of you have. And over the next couple of years, we're going to see if the developers of this UTM system can find a way to mitigate every possible negative scenario. My own state of North Dakota is actually leading the charge in this effort with the Northern Plains UAS test site and the Vantis system. They have been conducting tests for a few years and they've recently expanded their infrastructure exponentially which is another step towards making drone deliveries commonplace. Another big limitation to consider is weather. Drones don't like wind, heavy rain, snow, or extreme cold. And yes, they're advancing waterproofing, heated batteries, and stronger flight systems. But let's be real. If you live in North Dakota in January, don't expect your red pepper burritos by drone anytime soon. So the early rollout, it's gonna focus on mild climates. If you live in smaller communities or suburbs in the Southern United States, you will be the first ones to see more drone deliveries implemented. Now with every advancement comes pushback and controversy. The most obvious topic is that of privacy. To navigate safely, many drones use onboard cameras. And that means that they're technically filming as they fly over neighborhoods. Companies swear that that footage is processed only for navigation. But here's the concern. Who has access to that data? Could that data be hacked? Could law enforcement tap into delivery drones for surveillance or insurance companies or local tax estimators? These are valid concerns and ones that will need to be addressed up front. If these companies want support of this technology, they are going to have to gain the trust of the people that they want to serve. I don't know how they're going to do it, but I'm very interested to see how it develops. Secondly, noise. Anyone who has flown a drone or heard a drone flying overhead knows they are not exactly quiet. Now multiply that by dozens or even hundreds of drones buzzing daily over your house. Imagine sitting in your backyard and instead of listening to the birds and the crickets chirping, it's a constant propeller hum. So here's the fire starter question. Would you trade your peace and quiet for faster Amazon or Walmart deliveries? And what about jobs? Delivery drivers and truckers, are they gonna be replaced by flying robots? Some argued yes, absolutely. But other experts say no, because drones are only gonna handle lightweight last mile deliveries. Trucking and bigger logistics aren't gonna go anywhere, but it may shift jobs. Fewer drivers, more drone operators more technical maintenance roles, all sorts of jobs like that. This could be good in the long run, or it could also be devastating for certain industries, yet just another variable that we will just have to wait and see the outcome. Another consideration, drones are electric. They run on rechargeable battery power. There's no gas, there's no diesel. That means fewer emissions compared to say like a fleet of vans crisscrossing communities and that's a good thing. But are we just swapping traffic jams on the road for cluttered and noisy skies? That's an environmental and urban planning question that we don't have an answer for yet. So here's where we land, no pun intended. Part 108 is a huge step forward for drone delivery. It promises faster service, potentially lower costs, and brand new ways to access goods. But it also raises massive questions about safety, privacy, noise, jobs, and airspace management. This is one of those moments where technology is sprinting forward and the rest of us have to decide, are we ready for it? As for myself, I don't really have a solid stance either way yet because I think there's just so much that has to happen before we do scale it to its full potential. I'm kind of leaning towards the negative side of things right now, and that's not because I'm concerned about the safety or the noise side of it or anything like that, but mostly because the faster that this system develops, the faster that the hobby of flying drones for fun disappears. Our government has already taken steps to eliminate recreational drones from our skies to make room for drone deliveries. There's a lot of big companies that stand to make billions of dollars from this, and they have strong legislative support. Now, that being said, 
I am always in favor of advancing technologies and seeing what humans are capable of. Am I going to pay $12 for my Starbucks instead of $7? Probably not. But I can't wait to see how this could save lives and make many aspects of our lives much more efficient. Now, I know you're going to have comments about this, so comment down below and let's have a dynamic conversation and see if there is a consensus of some sort. Like I said, this isn't just about drones. It's about changing how we live. And if you found this breakdown helpful, hit that like button, share this video, and subscribe if you want more deep dives into tech that's shaping our world. I'd love to have you here for the long term. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great day and watch that video right over there next because for some reason, YouTube thinks you're going to like it. See you next time.